In the fickle world of television, where fortunes can pivot on a dime, some stars shine so brightly they end up being the harbinger of their own show's demise. From the celebrated charisma of Ted Danson to the formidable presence of George Pappard, join us as we unveil the tales of the stars whose luminance arguably outshined the lifespan of their respective series. Facts First presents He's the Only Reason His Famous Sitcom Was Cancelled. Ted Danson and Cheers In the golden era of television, a bustling bar in Boston became the favorite hangout spot for many American households. This virtual watering hole, of course, was none other than the setting of the iconic show Cheers. A pivotal part of its widespread adoration was the magnetic character Sam Malone, the dashing bar owner who made everyone feel at home. Ted embraced this role with a finesse that earned him a special place in viewers' hearts. But little did anyone anticipate the love affair between Danson and the bar would endure an untimely finale, causing a ripple effect that ultimately pulled the plug on the legendary show. In 1993, as the series was at the peak of its success, the walls of the famed establishment echoed with whispers of change. The maestro behind Sam Malone was seeking new horizons. At a staggering fee of $450,000 an episode, Danson's star power was undeniable. But the allure of fresh opportunities and the wariness of a decade-long commitment began to overshadow the grandeur of his paycheck. The bustling bar seemed to be at risk of losing its charismatic owner. Despite being at the zenith of its popularity, the exit of Danson painted a grim portrait of the show's future. A suggestion arose hinting at the torch being passed to Woody, the affable bartender played by Woody Harrelson. A transition seemed plausible, giving the show a fresh breath of air. However, as the saying goes, loyalty is a two-way street. Harrelson, firmly entrenched in the solidarity that had grown among the cast, declined to step into the mammoth shoes left vacant by Danson, a sentiment echoed strongly by other mainstays like George Wendt and John Ratzenberger. In an unforeseen turn of events, a united front formed, opposing the idea of a cheers without its beating heart, Danson. As whispers turned into conversations and confirmations, it became evident the close-knit cast harbored no intentions of carrying on without the nucleus of the ensemble. In retrospect, this united front can be viewed as a bold move, a collective decision to preserve the essence of a show that had not only garnered immense love, but also had crafted history in the realm of American sitcoms. Thus, as the curtains fell on cheers, the echoes of laughter, friendly banters, and heartfelt conversations that marked the show's journey seemed to resonate with a certain respect for the collective decision made by the cast. Danson's departure, while a big factor, merely triggered a collective realization, a mutual agreement to prioritize quality over quantity, integrity over continuity. George Pappard and Banachek in the early 70s, the series Banachek made a splash, offering a compelling glimpse into the world of insurance investigations through the eyes of its suave and astute protagonist, Thomas Banachek, played by George Pappard. The series was well-received, showcasing complex mysteries solved with intellect and charm, a testament to Pappard's strong portrayal of the lead. But after two seasons and 18 episodes, the show met an abrupt end. The downfall can be attributed directly to Pappard's personal circumstances. Facing a significant financial loss due to a settlement with his ex-wife that entitled her to a large portion of his earnings from the show, Pappard made the hard decision to exit. His departure effectively forced the cancellation of a series that, by all accounts, had potential for a longer run and a lasting legacy on the TV screen. Richard Dean Anderson and MacGyver in the relentless world of TV, even the most dedicated stars can find themselves yearning for respite. Such was the case with Richard Dean Anderson, the stalwart lead of a yet unnamed series who found himself at the crossroads of professional exhaustion and personal depletion. The Herculean task of shouldering the show had left Anderson physically exhausted and emotionally drained. The pressure and weight of expectation had taken a toll on his spirit, urging him to step back and reassess his journey in the television landscape. After a hiatus, Anderson graced the small screen once again with the show Legend, but this venture unfortunately couldn't gain traction and fizzled out in its debut season. The setback, however, didn't dampen his spirit. After a thoughtful interval of two years, he embraced the narrative that Stargate SG-1 presented a setting where the spotlight was shared, alleviating the immense pressure he once bore alone on MacGyver. 
This transition underscored a conscious choice for group-focused narratives, allowing him to explore roles where the burden of carrying a series was distributed evenly among the cast. Chuck Connors and Branded In the mid-1960s, TV audiences were captivated by the gritty Western drama Branded, starring the well-known Chuck Connors, who had already garnered fame from his previous role in The Rifleman. Branded narrated the engrossing tale of an officer in the West who found himself ostracized after being falsely accused of cowardice, tracing the evolution of his life in the wake of this reputation-shattering claim. At the outset, the series experienced turbulence, with early episodes failing to live up to the promise of the pilot. In a bid to salvage the show, producer Andrew J. Fennedy took the reins, instigating a slew of changes that saw the departure of several team members, including editors and directors. Fennedy assumed a dominant role, asserting an unyielding control over the production's direction, even dictating terms to Connors, the star of the show. Remarkably, Fennedy's firm grip steered Branded to success, rocketing to the 14th spot in the ratings during its inaugural year. Connors, once the linchpin of its triumph, gradually became a roadblock to its continued prosperity. Despite raking in $10,000 an episode, owning a part of the show, and enjoying producers' fees, Connors' dedication to the series began to wane. Shunning promotional events and severing ties with his agent, lawyer, and press agent, he became increasingly detached, focusing on his golf pursuits instead. As he distanced himself from the peripheral activities vital to the show's promotion and expansion into new markets, he started clashing with the sponsors, Procter & Gamble. His blatant refusal to cooperate on promotional fronts and foster relationships with potential stakeholders infuriated the sponsors, leading them to pull the plug on the series, despite its sustained popularity. In later years, a reflective Connors acknowledged his role in the premature end of Branded, expressing regret over his actions. Despite its untimely conclusion, the series maintains a presence in syndication and is available for audiences to rediscover on DVD. A few more notable showstoppers. Comedic genius Red Fox decided to part ways with Sanford & Son, lured by a more lucrative offer from ABC. Unfortunately, the new venture couldn't mirror the success he enjoyed with the popular show. The producers tried to salvage Sanford & Son, even attempting a spin-off named Sanford Arms, but it couldn't hold down the fort, ultimately succumbing to dwindling viewership. In another corner of the TV universe, Andy Griffith grew weary of his role in the self-titled sitcom, though the show changed into Mayberry RFD, which managed to carve out a place in the top 30 shows, it couldn't withstand CBS's rural purge and had to bid adieu to its loyal audience. A similar tale unfolded with Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which saw its end when Will Smith chose to explore the alluring world of cinema after an impressive six-season run. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of these shows was your favorite to watch? Let us know in the comments section below.